السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear student of third secondary We are going to solve questions of chapter 2 Chemical analysis We are going to solve the second part of it Okay In this worksheet we are going to Practice determining the purity of Substance based on its proportion By mass and physical properties Let's start by Questions of Egyptian knowledge bank We are going to start with it okay question number one what is the equation that gives the percentage purity in terms of the mass of the pure chemical and the mass of the sample okay we have here number one of choices we have percentage purity mass sample minus mass of pure chemical over mass of sample time 100 to give the percentage Okay, we have another one. We have here percentage equal mass of sample divided by mass of pure chemical time 100. Okay, another one, number C. Percentage purity equal mass of pure chemical over mass of sample time 100. And the last one, mass purity equal the mass of sample divided over mass of pure chemical. We said before that we are going to give mass percentage by mass of one over mass of all time 100 this is our rule in a simple way so if we have one over all time 100 it means that the answer of this one is mass of pure chemical substance it means one divided mass of sample all that contain all component of the chemical substance time 100 this is the first rules that we take in our chapter percentage purity equal mass of pure chemical substance divided by mass of sample as all time 100 it means that we have many rules that taken before like calculating mass how we can calculating mass by giving the first rule that we have taken number of moles equal mass over moral mass we give the mass equal number of moles time molar mass of the substance so after giving the mass of the sample or the mass of pure or mass of pure chemical substance we can get the percentage of purity of this substance okay we have our rules very interesting and we have different problems that we will solving on it okay we are going to question number two Okay, question number two says that a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen gas has a mass of 1.2 kilogram after 250 gram of oxygen in the mixture is reacted with a metal. Pure nitrogen is left behind. Okay, we have here the nitrogen left behind. Two, two significant figures. What is the percentage purity of nitrogen in the original mixture? We want to calculate the percentage of what? Of nitrogen. Okay, at first, here we have a problem. We must get, we have mass, to get the mass of nitrogen. At first, we have mass of sample and we have two components inside the sample. We have nitrogen and oxygen. If we take one of them or we have one of them, we can make a, div a, a, a minus or subtraction to sample as all minus one of them to get the other okay we have here mass of nitrogen we want to get the mass of nitrogen so we take the sample mass minus mass of oxygen okay this is the first step okay we have here a problem take many steps okay the second one we will calculate the mass of nitrogen by converting the same in the same unit we have 1.2 kilogram we will convert it to 1200 gram as they must be in the same unit minus 250 gram so at first we get the mass of what mass of nitrogen so we have here the mass of nitrogen 950 gram okay after that we take or we have the rule mass percentage or percentage purity equal mass of pure chemical or 
the one of them divided mass of all time 100 percentage okay here we have mass of pure chemical 950 gram that we take from the first step divided by total mass 1200 time 100 so we get them percentage purity while giving to us at the end will be 79 percentage okay i think it's problem need many steps but it's easy at the all we have a lot of problems please concentrate it take just hint to take the the idea of the problem and we will take after time you will solve it very easy and take a less time in solving okay we are going to question number three Okay, question number three says that, okay, which of the following statement based describe, best describe what an impurity is? Okay, impurity means unwanted substance mixed with within a desired substance. Okay, another one, a wanted substance mixed with within a desired substance. Another one, a substance finally dispersed in another substance. We have number D, a substance dissolved in another substance. And a last one, substance that can be separated from another substance. Here we have many choices. We have impurity means that substance that we didn't want, mix it with another one we want. So the right answer will be number A. Here we have unwanted substance, mix it with a desired or wanted substance. I think we must concentrate in reading many statement with the same meaning and we have to concentrate to solve it. Okay, we are going to question number five. Okay. Okay, question number five says that which of the following is an effect that impurities don't typically have on the boiling or melting point of a substance? Okay, it means that we didn't affected or the impurities not affected okay number one here a making number a making the melting point occur over a larger temperature range it may be deviating from the reference value from the melting point or boiling point number c making the boiling point occur sharply at a definite temperature number d increasing the boiling point and number e decreasing the melting point okay if we want to don't affect on the boiling point or melting point of a substance it means that we want to make impurities alone and the substance keep its own properties without any changing we didn't want the properties of substance change so here we have number c making boiling point occur sharply at a definite temperature okay if we reach to a definite temperature special for this substance so we have here the substance and we must over this temperature to make that special for the substance or it depends on what what we have taken before specific heat for this substance okay we have here another question question number six we are going to question number six okay question number six says that which of the following substances can be considered chemically pure what do we mean by chemically pure okay here we have a brass number a number b seawater do you think it be pure seawater it is a mixture as all well. it is from water and salt Another one, air. Air also is a mixture. And apple juice, apple juice may be pure. Sometimes may be mixed with some water, some sugar. The last one, a bar of 24 karat gold. Okay, here we have the brass. It means that the total amount of metal in the, as present in the earth's crust. It means that we have some impurities inside it. 
okay if we have a concentration definite concentration of the substance it means that we have a substance in the pure state it means that no impurities or no additives to this substance so here we have the answer will be number e a bar of 24 karat gold okay i think it's easy but we must know all the items or or the meaning of the items or the words in front of you okay we are going to question number seven okay question number seven says that a student obtain a sample of water and wants to test its purity by determining its melting and boiling point so if we want to determine the purity we have two choices determining which of them available melting point or boiling point so what will happen number one determining the amount of analytes through a qualitative analysis number b identifying the type of metal precipitated from qualitative analysis okay maybe easy for us number c determining the amount of analyte through a qualitative analysis okay here we have a quantitative analysis okay i think maybe number d identifying the type of metal precipitated through quantitative analysis also here we have the answer will be number b okay we will take in consideration the appear after the appearance of precipitation or the metal percepted when make a qualitative analysis it means that we take a purity of substance in consideration as here we reaches to its boiling point if a uh, uh, with want to identify the type of metal precipitated through a qualitative analysis so here we reaches to the test for impurity or purity for this substance okay it's a very important we must take in consideration the type of questions that concentrate on the items quantitative and the difference between quantitative and qualitative analysis okay we are going to question number eight Okay, we have here question number eight says that which of the following choices represent the types of precipitation reactions in the chemical analysis technique okay we have the first one flame test and volumetric methods okay we have the first one we want to take the type of pre precipitation reaction in the chemical analysis okay another one spot tests and gravimetric methods another one flame tests and the gravimetric methods number d spot tests and the volumetric methods the last one gravimetric methods and volumetric what methods okay here we have kind of or we want to know the type of precipitation it means that a qualitative okay so here we have a kind of test that depend on the measuring its qual quality its quality in the chemical analysis so we have two methods here we have spot tests and gravimetric methods we want to know the qualitative analysis here or the type of precipitation reaction it means it's not a quantitative analysis it's a qualitative analysis so here we have two 
tests for zits, our two methods. We have the number one spot tests and the second one gravimetric methods. Okay, I think we must study each item in our chapter. Okay, we are going to question number nine. Okay, question number nine says that a student obtains a sample of water and wants to test its purity by determining its melting point and boiling point. Okay, what results should the student expect to find if the sample is pure? Okay, we have here another point of view. Okay, the sample boiled at exactly 100 percentage or 100 degree, 100 degree Celsius and freezes at exactly zero degree Celsius. The second one, the sample boils between 99 degrees Celsius and 101 degrees Celsius and the freezes between one, zero, one degree Celsius and negative one degree Celsius. Okay, it's another one. The sample boils and the freezes over a large temperature range maybe okay have another one the difference in temperature between its melting and boiling point is exactly 100 degrees Celsius okay what do you think about it okay we have a solution what do we mean by water sample of water it means that we have a kind of solvent here have a specific heat or it is a kind that we have inside it a number of temperature that make a boiling on it or another one make a freezing exactly at it we have certain temperatures so if we have only sample of water here in our question and we want to determine that it's boiling and it's melting point it's a fixed temperatures here as we take it a quantitative measuring for this substance or the solvent water here we have boil at exactly 100 degrees Celsius and not over it or below it and exactly freezes at 100 uh, sorry uh, 0 degrees Celsius not below or above it so if we are taking purity or pure water it will boils at 100 degrees Celsius and the freezes at 0 degrees Celsius if there is a difference than this can we expect it is a pure water no it's not a pure water it will be mixed with some minerals or have impurities inside it okay I think we must take in consideration this point when asking about kind in or any a substance in the case of pure different from the impurity okay we are going to question number 10 or the rest of this question okay how can the student obtain pure water if the sample is found to contain soluble impurities okay the student notes that it may be some impurities how how by changing temperature change in temperature as we say okay how we can obtain pure water if I define or discuss that the temperature not as we want here we have another of methods we have filtration chromatography distillation and titration last one crystallization okay if we want to obtain the pure substance we must take in consideration that we have to make distillation to take the water we will make heating that changing water in the phase and by collecting it we get the pure water and all the impurities will be evolved during heating so if we make distillation we get water alone and any impurities will be precipitated revolving or taking in consideration that we collect water at the end without any soluble impurities okay like when 
evolving or when we take the water from sea water sea water we make distillation by evaporating water and collecting it in tanks and collect the salt at the end of the distillation process okay we have here the way to collect soluble impurities from water or from any substance that dissolve in it okay we are going to question number okay question number nine the image here below shows a labeled bottle of orange juice okay what is writing on it okay we have here 100 pure orange juice and orange juice from concentrate okay we have here pure it means that no additive substance on it okay let's talk the question here why might the company claim the orange juice is 100 percentage pure okay why i'm not sure this is a pure how we can get it or how we can be many times we have the point if we have concentrated or pure or not pure number one it has a pH of 7 making it neutral number two it contains no added or for artificial products number C it is made of any one type of compound number D the solution is completely orange in color do you think color will affect I didn't think it okay the last one the oranges were originally grown okay uh, I don't know the source I didn't want to know the source here but if we have a substance that we called it it's a pure juice what is the meaning of pure juice do you think it has any additive no it means that we have no added or any artificial products added to it so it will take some time to prepare it and we are sure that is no adding substance or no chemical substance added or it and we must know that it is pure substance as all so we have here number b the answer it contains no added or artificial products okay i think it's easy but we have to concentrate on different items or different kinds of questions okay we are going to complete this part of question the second part of question here why might a chemist say the orange juice is not a pure okay you say it is a pure um, and i am saying i am a chemist and i am saying it's not a pure why okay we have here number a it's only contains an artificial substance maybe why not another one number b the particles are free to move around each other okay i think uh, here we have some impurities maybe another one it doesn't contain just one substance okay also it may be right another one it is slightly acidic okay the last one the solution is not colorless okay it's not a point of our importance here the solution is not colorless okay all the juices if it is pure not colorless okay they may be uh, different colors yellow green according to the kind of juice so here we have if we say it's not a pure okay i can see by naked eye there is some impurities or something what moving inside it Okay, or we, we can say there is impurities it's not a pure okay it's a kind of substance here not contain just one substance I'm not sure that it is a substance okay I think we have additives like a glucose or any kind of sugar that we add to it so it doesn't contain just one substance it means that we have here not a pure substance we have here a uh, impurities or additives or mixture and we know that it there is impurities inside it and we can measure it is pure or not by finding more than one substance in 
decide it by analysis, okay? Okay, we, this is the end of our question. Okay, at the end of this part, I hope you enjoy this part of our chapter, quantitative analysis. I hope you enjoy our questions of Egyptian Knowledge Bank. Please study hard, and if you have any question, you can ask us. Okay, waiting for your questions. I hope you enjoy today.